Welcome to the Daily Accelerated Growth Call. This is Tuesday, October 6, 2015, and we've got a few talking points. Um, <laughs> if you ever watched the movie The Gambler, and I never saw the original, but I watched the more recent version, there's a, a speech that, um, that uh, what's his name, gives. Uh, why can't I think of it? guy who is in the other show <laughs> of course you know exactly who that is um, John Goodman there's a speech that John Goodman gives and it's essentially if I had to give it a title I would call it living from a place of F you uh, he didn't you know he spelled he, you know said that out um, and the idea is this the idea is being able to l really live from a place where you're not beholden to anyone where nobody can sort of tell you what you have to do where you have true freedom I think that's what being an entrepreneur is really all about it's about living from that place of F you and what that translates to is if somebody tries to um, compel me to do something I have the freedom and the option frankly of saying to that person F you you know I don't need to do anything I don't want to uh, in other words, nobody can have leverage over me. I'll never, I'm will never. i not desperate enough to be willing to sort of compromise my values because I need the money, let's say, right? Things along those lines, I think, are what we think of when we think of what he was talking about in that speech. If you haven't seen the movie, watch the movie and pay particular attention. I would even go as far as, you know, watch it on Netflix or Voodoo or something and take notes when he's giving that speech. I actually have been meaning to remember to get a transcript of it. Um, and there's an article here that uh, I've bookmarked called 10 Steps to Becoming a Self-Made Millionaire. And it's coming up on my first screen. I'll bring it over. And, the, you know, even if, you're, even if it's not your goal to become a millionaire, I still think we could all benefit from the sort of advice that's given in an article like this. And this is one of the things I hate about Inc.com is that they force you to watch these ads. And usually there's an option to click on to get rid of the ad. But here there's not. You just have to wait, and I think it's, I don't know how many seconds. Um, so, hope, oh, there we go. Thank you, Inc.com, for letting me actually read the article that I clicked over to read. So, here is the deal, and I'm not going to read the article for you, but I'll go over the high point. And some interesting things. They don't live like millionaires. It says they're cheap, right? It says they give to charity. They invest. Do you invest, you know, most of us, especially in the uh, ABO, Accountants, Bookkeepers, and Business Owners group on Facebook, most, many of us, if not all of us, make a living, at least a good part of it, if not some of it, uh, using products made by Intuit, such as QuickBooks, right? You should own stock in Intuit. I learned years ago, um, while I was working as a stockbroker, one of the brokers that I worked for, one of my sort of mentors in that business, had given me a book called One Up on Wall Street. And the essence of the book is written by Peter Lynch, who's a famous fund manager from Fidelity. He was famous for the Fidelity Magellan Fund. Took a lot of companies public, and what he his whole uh, premise on investing was that you invest in companies that you know. You look around your household and you buy companies whose products you buy. So in a way, you're giving back to yourself because if, you're, if you own a piece of a company whose products you buy, then those companies profits have a way of coming back to you and in a sense it's like it offsets the cost of what you're buying every day right and even as pro advisors we spend <coughs> excuse me <coughs> we spend a good chunk of money on uh, our pro advisor membership for example and that gets us the product so <coughs> excuse me again uh, if you invest it into it it has a way of coming back to you now I've owned into its stock for a while now uh, recently bought more uh, because the stock performs well and because it's a company I know, it's a company that I, I make a living, whose products I make a living with almost every single day of my life. So they invest. I, you know, I thought it was interesting. Um, and, and again, even if your goal is not to become a millionaire, it still can't hurt to do these things. I'm assuming that it's fair to say that everybody has at least one thing in common in terms of their long-term life goals, which is that at a certain point, you want to be able to retire and have some comfort. You want to have some money put away so that you can enjoy your retirement and spend time with your kids, grandkids, whatever that might look like for you. Uh, I assume we all have that in common, even if it doesn't mean actually being a millionaire. Uh, all this is stuff that will definitely help you move in that direction. And, <clears throat> you know, what does it really look like? Well, we're going to build equity. How do we build equity? Well, we increase assets, right? We minimize our liabilities. Assets minus liabilities equals equity, right? And that's net worth. So that's how we build our net worth is by increasing our assets, increasing the value of the things that we own, and minimizing uh, any obligations that we have going out against them. So 
with that said, you know, first of all, let me back up. I did start my day out properly by taking my dogs for a walk. Nothing to do with work. And <clears throat> it occurred to me that I wanted to point out to you this morning that uh, when I'm doing that walk, when I'm taking my dogs for a walk, I, of course the thoughts start to creep in about the day ahead and those sorts of things, and I, I block them out. And one of the ways that I block them out is that I stop and look around at where I am. I mean, sometimes that's the best way to bring yourself right back into the moment. Because how many times throughout the day, try and keep track today of how many times throughout the day your mind wanders. You're working on something that's a little boring because it's repetitive or redundant in nature. And your mind wanders to something else, which means you're not focused on what you're doing, which, by the way, is a distraction. Um, so the way I bring myself back into the moment is I literally focus my, intention, my attention on what's going on right around me. Where am I? And sometimes I'll, I'll do it by asking myself that question. I'll say to myself, hey, Seth, where are you right now? And if I'm taking that walk, when I ask myself that question, it brings me right back into that moment. And I look up and I look around and I appreciate my surroundings. I, and then I start my day with that feeling of gratitude for where I live, for, you know, I live in a great neighborhood. There's not a lot of crime here. Uh, and I look as far and wide as I can. I take in the view. And again, it just deepens that sense of gratitude for where I am and where I'm at. And then I'll look down at my dogs and, you know, I love those guys with all of my heart. So it's great to have, you know, that moment with with somebody that I love. You know, even if they're not humans who can actually have a conversation with me, we have a different kind of interaction and a different kind of exchange of love, if you will. So I started my day off properly that day, uh, that day, this morning. See, I took myself out of the moment for a second. Um, Next thing I have on my screen, calm.com, uh, another great way to uh, sort of reset, and you can do this anytime during the day. They have meditations that go for like 10 minutes. Um, so if you find yourself having a real struggle, let's say concentrating, staying focused, maybe because you didn't get enough sleep the night before, whatever the reasons, uh, you can spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's your choice. They have, you know, you just pick the length of time you want to meditate for. And you can just close your eyes and listen, and somebody guides you through how to kind of just, uh, they call it um, um, mindfulness, you know, so how to become mindful of where you're at and the moment you're in and that sort of thing. And I find that this really helps, especially if you get in the habit of doing it every single day. So start off the day right. Um, you know, take time away from work. Don't just get up, eat breakfast, and rush out to your day. You know, make sure you do something for you first thing every day. Last night I finished off really well, uh, went to a class that I signed up for, and then went to the gym and I swam laps at the pool. And I came home at about 10.30 at night, and then I relaxed, and I watched an episode of Daredevil, which is, you know, on Netflix, which is a show I happen to love. So I did it right, you know. I, I started and ended my day the right way, outside of the scope of what I do for a living. So now let's get, get down to business, because you know, again, uh, go through this article. Of course, I'll provide the link to it wherever you're watching this video. Um, <coughs> and if you uh, haven't already, sign up for the Daily Accelerated Growth Call because this is what we'll be doing every morning. We'll be looking at stuff like this. We'll be talking about ways that you can improve your life based on uh, increasing efficiencies, developing processes and systems within and without your business uh, so that you can enjoy a better life all the way around. It's my opinion very strong opinion actually that the better balanced we are the more effective we're going to be uh, in our jobs whatever it is that we're trying to do for a living so um, read this article because there's some really good stuff in here uh, you know working side jobs they marry well um, you know organized uh, and, and so on and so forth like I said I'm not going to read the article for you um, but now we come to an interesting talking point that I have listed for today which is as follows let's say that let's say you've had an Ignite session with Eric and clients are coming in now. Eric has helped you get clients in. The question I have for you is, do you have a system in place for what to do for how to handle it once those clients come in the door? Do you have an onboarding process in place? And you know the answer that I have for you on that question is that we do. We, you know, at a certain point, and I can be honest, uh, at a certain point I didn't. And I actually lost a few clients behind it because I really didn't have an organized process for bringing the clients in. Clients were getting confused and then frustrated, and a few walked away and said, I don't understand your process. You seem great, you know, coming in, but I just, it was very confusing and so on and so forth. So, you know, uh, ever the altruistic one, I said, okay, um, I 
can be upset that I lost the clients or I can say, what am I going to do to make sure that doesn't happen again? And that's what I talked about a little bit yesterday. When I don't achieve my goals, I, I don't. the point is not to beat myself up and say, oh my God, I screwed up. The point is to say, what am I gonna do differently now? And I realized based on that experience that what I had to do differently was develop a format, a formula for how we're going to bring clients in. So do you have this? Do you have a process? Because now what I would have got, what's been born out of that experience is that the second my client or prospect, I should say, the second they call me or send me the email and say, hey, Seth, I want to move forward, then I immediately go to this document, fill in their name and send it to them. And this document outlines the entire process, starting with I need them to fill out my contact form so that I can prepare a service agreement based on the information that they've provided. Even though I may think I have it, I like having the record of what they submitted and I like knowing that I have one place to go for where my clients have given me all of their information that I need for the service agreement. Um, we do a weekly call uh, and then I just outline the whole process because as I've mentioned, we use a lot of different apps. I have project management apps, some that are client facing, some that are strictly internal. So for the client facing ones, I need to make sure that the client is educated and understands. And one of the most powerful things I built into this, and this is based on actually a podcast I had listened to uh, back when I was in New Orleans for Sage Summit. Um, it was sort of, I, I derived it from the podcast. It wasn't a specific suggestion, but based on the podcast and the, the guy was talking about communication with clients, it occurred to me that one thing above all else that will ensure that this process is 100% solid is that I institute a weekly call for the first four weeks. For the first four weeks of the engagement, I, sp I plan on one hour. I may not need the whole hour, but I plan one hour a week with that client on the phone, going through things with them, answering any questions, making sure, uh, logging in remotely, showing them how the software that we're using works, making sure ultimately that, that they see that we have a process, number one, and two, that they're comfortable that this decision they've made with where to place their most sensitive information uh, is in good hands. And doing that weekly call will assuredly uh, accomplish that. It might be that after two weeks, you've got the system down. Maybe it's a really simple client. That's fine. Plan on the four weeks anyway. And if after two weeks you find you don't need the other two, great. Then at that point you establish, hey, we'll have a call next month. Just do a quick catch up and make sure everybody's still on the same page and everything's going exactly as we had planned and hoped. So the onboarding process, really, really important. And ultimately my goal with these daily accelerated growth calls is to help you establish the processes because <clears throat> you can have all the clients in the world coming in, but if you don't have the processes to take them on, if you don't have the bandwidth to take them on, you're going to lose them or you're going to find yourself having to turn them away because you'll maybe even be aware and honest enough up front to be able to say, hey, I, I can't take this on right now, right? The bottom line is if I can show you the processes that you need to help you increase the efficiencies, to streamline the, these processes in a way that allows you to take on more clients, well then that's how I'm hoping you can offset the cost of these daily accelerated growth calls. Because if I can help you, uh, you know, if Eric can help you get the clients and I can help you keep those clients and I can help you keep more clients, then you know, that's how the cost is offset. That's what I want to be able to address with you every day. Uh, and hopefully, you know, back of that is the idea that I'll, I'll help you get pumped up for the day, right? I'll help you get excited so that you can do those things. And as I mentioned yesterday, uh, I want to leave you with this one question uh, for your consideration, which is as follows. If you don't have clients coming in the door, if you don't have somebody to place a call with at 5 p.m. today to talk about uh, bringing them on board as a new client, then the thing you need to be doing in that same time that you otherwise would have made those calls is creating content aimed at a specific target market so that you can start bringing those clients in. And for that matter, doing anything else that you've learned to do as far as the marketing side of things to bring in those new clients, to open those floodgates. That's what I want to see you doing. So you're doing one of two things at a set period of time. Either you're talking to the prospects or you're creating the content that's going to help you bring in those prospects. It's one or the other. And hopefully as you do that more and more, you'll have more and more time to spend talking to prospects so that you'll have less and less of a need to produce the content. But don't get me wrong, you always need to be producing content. So when that time is consistently filled up with calls, then you'll need to carve out time somewhere else in your calendar to continue producing content, at least one new thing every week. In a perfect world, one new thing every day. I get that not everybody has the time for that sort of things. That, my friends, is all that I have for you on this beautiful Tuesday morning, Tuesday, October 6th, 2015. 
I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on our call.